There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. This text, which evidently discloses a belief in the existence of three separate and distinct beings in the Godhead, sets forth a doctrine which was anciently of almost universal prevalence. Nearly every nation, whether Oriental or Occidental, whose religious faith has been commemorated in history, discloses in its creed a belief in the trifold nature and triune division of the deity. St. Jerome testifies unequivocally, all the ancient nations believed in the Trinity. And a volume of facts and figures might be cited here if we had space for them in proof of this statement. A text from one of the Hindu Bibles, the Puranas, will evince the antiquity and prevalence of this belief in a nation of people more than 2,000 years ago. That text reads, quote, O you three lords, know that I recognize only one God. Inform me, therefore, which of you is the true divinity that I may address to him alone my vows and adorations. The three gods, Brahma, Vishnu, and Siva, becoming manifest to him, replied, Learn, O devotee, that there is no real distinction between us. What to you appears such is only by semblance. The single being appears under three forms by the acts of creation, preservation, and destruction, but he is one. Unquote. Now, Note that the remark here that the ancient Christian fathers almost universally and unanimously pro proclaimed the doctrine of the Trinity as one of the leading tenets of the Christian faith, and as a doctrine de derived directly by revelation from heaven. But here we find it most explicitly set forth by a disciple of a pagan religion more than 3,000 years ago, as the Christian missionary D. O. Allen states that the Hindu Bible in which it was found was compiled 1400 years before Christ and written at a still earlier period. And we find the same doctrine very explicitly taught in the ancient Brahmin, Persian, Chaldean, Chinese, Mexican, and Grecian systems, all much older than Christianity. No writer ever taught or avowed a belief in any tenet of religious faith more fully or plainly than Plato sets forth the doctrine of the Trinity in his Platon, written 400 years BC, and his terms are found to be in most striking conformity to the Christian doctrine on this subject, as taught in the New Testament. Plato's first term for the Greek Trinity was in Greek, one, to Agathon, the supreme god or father, two, the Logos, which is the Greek term for the word, and three, Psyche, which the Greek lexicon defines to mean soul, spirit, or ghost. Of course, the Holy Ghost. Here we have the three terms of the Christian Trinity, Father, Word, and Holy Ghost, as plainly taught as language can express it, thus making Plato's exposition of the Trinity and defining of its terms published 400 years BC identical in meaning with those of St. John's, as found in his Gospel, and contained in the above quoted text. Where, then, is the foundation for the dogmatic claim on the part of the Christian professors for the divine origin of the Trinity doctrine? <coughs> we will here cite the testimony of some Christian writers to prove that the Trinity is a pagan-derived doctrine. A Christian bishop, Mr. Powell, declares, I not only confess, but I maintain such a similitude of Plato's and John's Trinity doctrines as bespeaks a common origin. What is that you say, bishop? A common origin? Then you concede both are heaven-derived, or both heathen-derived. If the former, then revelation and heathenism are synonymous terms. If the latter, then Christianity stands on a level with heathen mythology. Which horn of the dilemma will you choose? St. Augustine confessed he found the beginning of John's Gospel in Plato's Phaedon, which is concession of the whole ground. Another writer, Chateaubron, speaks of an ancient Greek inscription on a great obelisk at Rome which reads, 1. The Mighty God, 2. 
the begotten of God, you know, as Christ is declared to be the only begotten, only begotten of the Father, and three, Apollo the Spirit, the Holy Spirit or Holy Holy Ghost, thus presenting in plain language the three terms of the Trinity. And Mr. Cudworth, in corroboration of this report, says, quote, "The Greeks had a first God, and second God, and third God." and the second was begotten by the first, and yet for all that, unquote, continues Mr. Cudworth, quote, they considered all these one, unquote. In the Pl Platonic or Grecian trinity, the first person was considered the planner of the work of creation, the second person the creator, and the third person the ghost or spirit, which moved upon the face of the waters and infused life into the mighty deep of creation. The same Holy Ghost, which was descended from heaven to infuse life into the waters of Christ's baptism. Thus, the resemblance is complete. Mr. Basnage quotes a Christian writer of the 5th century as declaring, The Athenian sage Plato marvelously anticipated one of the most important and mysterious doctrines of the Christian religion, meaning the Trinity. An important concession, truly. The oldest and probably the original form of the Trinity is found in the Brahman and Hindu systems, the terms of which are 1. Brahma, the Father or Supreme God, 2. Vishnu, the Incarnate Word and Creator, 3. Siva, the Spirit of God, i.e. the Holy Spirit or Ghost, each answering to corresponding terms of the Christian Trinity, and yet 2,000 years older, according to Dr. Smith. We have not allowed space for other facts and citations, as this work is designed as a mere epitome, although we have but entered upon the threshold of the evidence tending to prove that the Christian Trinity was born of heathen parents, that it is an offspring of heathen mythology, like other doctrines of the Christian faith, claimed by its disciples as the gift of divine revelation. Here let it be noted as a curious chapter in sacred history that the numerous divine trinities which have constituted a part of nearly every religious system ever propagated by the world were composed, in every case, of male gods. No female has yet ever been admitted into the triad of gods composed, composing the orthodox trinity. Every member of the trinity is in every case a male, an old bachelor, a doctrine most flagrantly at war with the principles of modern philosophy. For this science teaches us that the endowment of a being with either male or female organs presupposes the evidence, existence of the other sex, and that either sex without the other would be a ludicrous anomaly, and a ludicrous distortion of nature unparalleled in the history of science. As sexual organs create an imperious desire for the other sex, no male or female could long enjoy full happiness in the absence of the other party. What an unhappy, lonesome place, therefore, the orthodox heaven must have been during the eternity of the past, with no society but old bachelors. The trinity was constituted of males, simply because women has always been considered a mere cipher in society, a mere tool for man's convenience, an appendage appendage of his wants. Hence, instead of having a place among the gods, she led a practical life of a servant and a menial, which accounts for her exclusion from the Trinity. But the time is coming when she will rule both heaven and earth with the omnipotent power of her love nature, which shall have no war in heaven and no fighting on earth. <laughs>